So I've been playing Diablo 4 recently and noticed on YouTube that every single Barbarian Lilith kill I could find was either old and exploiting that infinite bleed Ren stuff that got fixed or is new and exploiting the bug on the quaking aspect that makes it do like double damage if you miss your slam. In fact, it's so prevalent that most content creators have just coped themselves into calling it a mechanic, even putting bug lists in their titles when their entire build relies on what is obviously a major bug. So. I thought it would be fun to produce an actual bugless kill using a build variant you've probably never seen before, and despite that, it's still one of the fastest online, so let's go over the fight. The first interesting part is here where she spawns two adds. Steel Grasp makes this really consistent and easy. You can just yoink the two monsters to the edge of the arena and kill them both, AoE them down in one hit. Being able to reposition them to the edge is very important because being on the edge allows you to do the easy wave dodge method, I suppose you can call it. Here, I'll show you. When she goes to spawn her waves, you go to the edge, any edge, and then you just walk to the other side. Works every time. No dodging back and forth between the wonky hitboxes. Here, you'll see it again. And this is a full glass cannon build for the most part. I can't tank any waves. I can't tank any fireballs. I pretty much can't tank any major attacks because that's the only way for me to have enough damage to actually kill her in a reasonable amount of time. So finding consistent setups is really, really important if you basically can't make a mistake. This is her second and final ad phase where she spawns three Balrogs. I do the same thing. I walk to the edge of the arena and I hook them. This time I miss one because I'm bad, but it's okay. I can just dodge out and then hook him right back. Steel Grasp makes it really, really clean, and it gives you a lot of leeway to make mistakes because you can just reposition the mobs wherever you are. She's at injured life now, and you'll see I do just an insane amount of damage to her when she's injured. I probably do like 20 million, I think. Yeah, 20 million, 19 million. It's because this build has a lot of injured enemy damage and also a lot of injured enemy critical strike chance. So my crit chance goes up to almost 100% and my damage goes through the roof as well when enemies are at low life, which for the first phase, it does help because it makes it faster, but it's mostly for this phase, the mother of mankind, because her final 35% or so HP is just really insane. So I want to get it over as fast as possible. Something making this phase extra hard for me is that I don't have a movement speed amulet. I have two amulets. One does have movement speed, but it doesn't have any damage. The other amulet I have has a lot of damage, but no movement speed. And that's the one I'm choosing to run so that I have more damage and I guess I just dodge better, I suppose. Speaking of dodging, coming up now is the ghost phase, homing fireball phase, skull phase, whatever you want to call it. And I pop Wrath of the Berserker. You might have been wondering why I was even running this before. This is why. So I have enough movement speed to outrun the ghosts. I also have Rallying Cry, which gives me unstoppable. That's pretty much the reason I'm running Rallying Cry, so I don't get sucked in by that move there. Because she can suck you into the homing fireballs, which is very inconsistent and difficult to navigate around, so I don't even want to deal with it. Coming up here is the first stagger. So I have a pretty good amount of CC in this build. I used to even run Butcher's Cleaver, but I just, just decided for more regular damage instead of doing that. It's pretty important to have enough CC to stagger Lilith at least two times maybe three times you can't really stagger her more than three times because her bar goes insane after that but every time she gets staggered it randomly deletes one of the pools or maybe two of the pools sometimes on the ground which is super vital for especially at the end by the end of the fight the platform is really really small so if the platform is just covered with a ton of pools then the, you basically auto lose at that point Oh, here's her slam attack. I think we're seeing it for the first time. You just need to run around in a circle, and I pop Rally and Cry for movement speed. But here she's going to drop another pool, and managing these is really important. I make her drop the pool on top of the pool that already exists because there can only be one in one spot. They, they don't spawn two in one spot. And here she's going to spawn another one again, which is why I stand down here and tank a bunch of... I, almost, <laughs> I, I, think, I think I had like 5% HP. Like I said, I don't have a lot of health but I just have enough that I can tank a pool for a little bit. Here we have another homing fireball phase. And my strategy for this is probably not the greatest. I just sort of brute force dodge through stuff, uh, just try to reaction it, it out. But I have seen people like go up across the edge, so I could probably get a better strategy than that. And there I dump another puddle on top of an already existing puddle. Here she's staggered again, which deleted a pool and now she's at injured life 
And this is the final part of the fight. I'm going to spend the next like 30 seconds or more probably just only dodging stuff. You can see that there are more pools now. There are more humming fireballs now. She spawns it every time she does the, the sweep attack. And for this slam, I specifically try to get her to do it over here on the right-hand side because otherwise if she does it in the middle, I might not have enough room to dodge her and the homing fireballs. Here she chops off the last part of the edge and I just dodge through fireballs. Again, might, might be able to have a better strategy, but that's the best I could do. One more slam attack. This one is super important to get her to do it on the edge because if she does it in the middle, it's all over. And there I actually barely get her to do it far enough on the edge. But here she's at injured damage. I have 100% crit. I have turbo damage. And I need to kill her before the next phase, or at least I really want to because the next phase is super hard. So I get two more chunks in. And right before she flies away for the crisscross final, final phase, I'm able to kill her a little bit early. So that's the one saving grace I have that made it a little bit easier. And why I put all that injured enemy damage and crit chance in my build, which... I will show you now. I'll start with and focus on how I actually generate fury with this build because it's probably the thing that most people haven't seen before. I don't use Echoing Fury. I don't use Bold Chieftain. I just generate fury all the time, forever. No cooldowns, no downtime. I don't use shouts to upkeep my fury in any way. I pretty much just run Rally and Cry in normal content. This started because I used to PvP a lot. Uh, I you feel like a lot a lot and i didn't like that barbarians were bound to shouts for their fury it just felt annoying it felt bad to play and also in pvp you know they're not monsters that just sit there fighting you people can kite you away you have a, a window of weakness and it's really bad especially against rogues you can easily kite away from you so i i came up with a build that doesn't need to use shouts which happens to also be really good for lilith because lilith is just six minutes of non-stop stream of dps which having downtime and cooldowns really hinders that so how do we do it weapons master swapping weapons grants you three fury there's another effect that's identical to this on the skill tree called furious impulse each time you swap weapons gain six fury so we got six fury we have three fury add them together every time you swap weapons you get nine fury now we are using a builder and a spender flay and then hammer the ancients that's two weapon swaps so every time we do a Hammer of the Ancients, we do the Builder Spender sort of uh, cycle, we get 18 Fury baseline just from the weapon swap before anything else happens. Uh, we also have a Glyph, which is just an insane Glyph for damage, but it also is a, has a really good effect. Wrath says that skills that critically strike generate three Fury. I have about 50% crit chance. So again, Builder Spender, two attacks, 50% crit chance. On average, I'm critting one time per builder spender cycle so there's three more fury and then finally just flay is a builder and builders generate fury this particular one generates 10 but it actually generates a little bit more because i'm using a two-handed weapon because i'm using a two-handed weapon i can use endless fury which gives me even more fury on the builder so it actually is generating 11.5 15 percent more than normal to prove to you this works i'll spreadsheet it out so if you have a max roll amulet or like a near max roll amulet and boots for fury cost reduction your hammer of the ancients normally costs about 50 fury so if we just add up what we have we have the first weapon swap that's nine the second weapon swap is nine the glyph like i said is three and flay to remind you is 11.5 my rings the gear gives me 31 percent on my character it could go up to 40 percent actually i don't have perfect rings and hammer the ancients has a buff that gives you 30 percent more on top of that that's a multiplier so if we just do the quick maths add 70 percent to our baseline of 32 we're already generating 55 fury per hammer the ancients it only costs 50 so this is enough to infinitely cast double fury cost hammer the ancients forever but there's a really important aspect that every barbarian uses called limitless rage which says that you need to have 15 fury over your cap and if you do that you get a lot of damage so how do i get 15 fury over the cap well it turns out nobody knows this i guess including me until recently Every single Barbarian in the game just has 15% increased Fury. It just, it's just the thing they have. I'm pretty sure at some point they buffed Fury and they just gave it 15% flat invisible. But just go on a level 1 Barbarian, go flay something. It's not going to give you 10 Fury. It'll give you like 12. So we're actually getting 62 
fury every attack. Not to mention if my rings are a little bit better, this would just straight up be 65. Like if this were 40, then boom. All the time, lim limitless rage forever. But it still technically works even though my gear isn't that good because you get fury when you take damage. Uh, I'll just real quick run through the skill and paragon trees. So we have flay. We don't take the damage reduction because we don't need it against Lilith. Normally it's really good, of course. Max out Hoda. We already went over endless fury to give us enough fury for the build. Rallying cry is pretty much exclusively for the unstoppable and it also gives us fortify which is nice to give us to get us over the 50 percent threshold that we need for counter offensive if we get over 50 percent fortify we do a bunch more damage so that's pretty important war cry it says do more damage so yeah of course we take it it says do more damage and berserking also says do more damage so that's pretty good and uh fortify movement speed is amazing so Always take the three points of movement speed, especially when you have to dodge stuff. That's like the most important points in the tree probably for Lilith. This is all of our vulnerable damage. This is just how we make people vulnerable and generic damage. Generic damage that everybody takes. This is uh, CC, 45% chance on lucky hit to stun for three seconds. Three seconds is a lot of seconds. It destroys her stagger par when it procs and talked about how important staggering Lilith is already. Wrath of the Berserker, again, pretty much only for the movement speed and for the unstoppable because it's so important in the fight. This point, I could probably take this point out. This point's kind of whatever. Put it into Tempered Fury. It does technically help to burst during the first phase, I suppose. And then Furious Impulse, you, you need it to generate Fury for the build. Invigorating Fury is the only like super spicy point that probably you haven't seen most people run. I think that this is amazing for regular PvE and PvP content because it just gives you so much regen, especially in PvP. You can like outlast anybody in a 1v, just like a DPS check where both people are sitting there and fighting. This is, it makes a massive difference. It heals so much when you can't just spam potions. For the Lilith fight, you can spam potions, but it costs a lot of mental bandwidth. This is maybe technically not necessary, but it's just so such good quality of life. You never need to think about it. You're always at max life and uh, having mental bandwidth for a fight where you need to think about Every single thing and dodge tons of stuff is super valuable. So I run it. I think it's very strong. Try it out. And then finally, Unbridled Rage, which is the only Barbarian Keystone passive, so we have to take it. I'll uh, sort of go over the Paragon Tree a bit. I'll try to link this in the description and like the Reddit comments so that you can go check it out for yourself. I'm not going to explain every single thing I went over. But uh, for the most part, I take almost like 90% of every single damage thing that is available on any page for a barbarian so i take almost every single damage thing you can take except for when it's very 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 efficient to take survivability you saw that i only lived with like five percent hp in the fight and if i hadn't taken this stuff it would probably have been zero percent hp so you really can't turn down tenacity it's just too good just a few points for iron strength uh 200 armor it's just too good you have to take it Otherwise, damage. Have to take the Weapon Master Sheet because this is how I get enough Fury for the build. This is the Vulnerable Sheet that everybody runs. This Sheet has Critical Strike damage, which is amazing. It also has a big pile of willpower so that I can sock it in Imbiber. It's like, doesn't have, it's, it's just a lot of flat damage. Damage while healthy. It's flat damage. Most people take Warbringer, but this costs like 13 points. It's very, very expensive, so I don't take it. Instead, I kind of cobble together enough fortify, like I said, with the with the aspect of tempering blows, and it's enough. So I don't need to spend the 12 points. But I do take what everybody else takes. Everybody takes the fury cost, max. sorry, the maximum fury, because it's really good with Hoda. Uh, everybody puts in wrath, because wrath is super good, and it generates enough fury for the build and damage. The last page, this is just a mortal draw page. It's only for mortal draw because mortal draw is like the strongest thing ever. Um, I don't know why every single barbarian doesn't run mortal draw. It's like multi a weird multiplicative thing, but it basically gives you like 9% increased crit chance or 10% increased crit chance, which is uh, incredible. So the glyph basically gives you 162% damage and 9% crit chance, which is literally twice as strong as any other glyph in the game so i think that this is a absolute must run and i run this page exclusively so i get 49 decks to run mortal draw my last video i posted here was like three or four years ago or something i used to make overwatch videos but i just felt like 
I had to post this video because uh, I had a lot of unique stuff to share. So if it was interesting, let me know. I have other unique Diablo 4 stuff that I can share. I don't think I'm going to become a full-time content creator or anything like that. But I do have a bunch of other cool stuff like how armor works and how PvP gambling works and things like that. So maybe I'll post more videos. Maybe not. I don't know. Have a good one.